Hi guys, welcome to another Emmy Creations video. And in this video, we're going to be looking over how to animate in Photoshop. Photoshop has a great timeline tool that helps you get started with animation easy. It's not too complicated to start and we're going to walk you through the whole process. So let's get started. So first off, we're going to have to create a new canvas. Let's do 130 by 130 because that's the size of my little stream avatar birds that you see all the time under my Twitch stream. If you want to check out my Twitch stream, I'm also live three days a week and can answer any questions you have about animation or anything art related. So here we create our new canvas. The first thing we're going to do is open up the timeline tab. We're going to go to Windows timeline and it's going to pop up at the bottom of your screen and then we're going to go ahead and say create video timeline so there are going to be two views that you might see this is the first view this is a video timeline and then there's this boxy version that you may see i personally like doing the video timeline version it allows you to create layers easier and stack them so first off there's going to be a few settings that we need to change right off the bat Right here in the top right of your timeline tab, you're gonna see these little hamburger three, four line menu. And in the menu, you're gonna see panel options. Panel options, we need to make sure our timeline units are using frame numbers. So once we have that changed, we can then go to our next setting, which is in the same menu under set timeline frame rate. By default, Photoshop, for whatever reason, uses 30 frames, but we want to use 24. This is the animation standard. Um, it allows you to just draw way less frames, basically six less frames per second. Another great thing to note is that you'll see the threshold or the minimum is 10 frames. And they set this because that's actually the least amount of frames that we can still process as being animated. Anything less than that just looks like flashing images passing by. So once you reach 10 to 12 frames, it will actually look like movement. So we're going to click OK to change that frame weight. So now we have our first layer set as our first frame. Each layer is a new frame. So if I do a copy and paste to duplicate this frame layer, you're going to see I'm going to have a new purple box. So your animation frames is going to show up as these purple boxes and you can change the duration of their frames by clicking and dragging. So here you see we have it at one frame and you can hold it and drag to get to two frames. Now with animation standard we like animating on twos which means one frame is usually held for two out of the 24 frames per second. This is because it kind of reaches the 12 frame threshold, which allows us to draw less frames. But if you ever need, you can still go back to one frame and have your frames pass by fa faster and have more information in them. So 24 frames per second gives you more variety of how you can animate, but we animate on twos because we want to draw the least amount of frames possible. So you can use these purple boxes in two ways. You can stack them like you see here, or you can drag them to be right next to each other. When they're right next to each other, they're basically in one timeline. So this would be the first frame you see. Let's see how that looks. And this will be the second frame you see. Let's make it hold for two. Oops. And you see how that becomes a movement. I'll go closer so you can see. Now, if you stack them, it works like normal layers that Photoshop has. And then the one on the bottom is going to be in back of the one in the front. So it allows you a lot of options. You can hold this for two frames or four frames so it always exists in the background. Maybe for environments or things far away of that nature. All right, let's go look at an animation I already have going. This is my stream avatar birdies, and this is the walk animation that I've created for them. There's a few tips I want to share with you. The first being loop 
playback. This is a setting you might find yourself using if you're doing a lot of cycles. So walk cycles, jump cycle, attack cycles, um, anything very game related, you might be doing that a lot. So here we go. This is our cycle. And as you can see, it's going from one to 16 multiple times back to back. If I only want it to play once, I can always turn off loop playback, which is in that same menu that we've been using. And it'll play from beginning to the end and then completely stop. Another related setting is this little tab that you can drag back and forth. As you can see, it's only playing from 0 to 16, even though I have all these frames in back of it. So if I want to play all the frames, I just drop this little tab to the end and it'll play the whole thing. As you can see, this, these are not part of the animation. I put these in for placeholder, reference holders. Um, it's just easier for me to include these in here and they are not necessarily part of the animation. You can put frames you're not currently using or maybe holding for a different scene back here or just for reference. Another good thing to know that have always frustrated me a little bit when I'm using this is that you have to be looking at and selecting the layer you are trying to draw on. So what I mean is you can see your layer selection through this light white border, as you can see around here. And because it is on frame five and six, I need to be looking at that layer and that frame in order to draw on it. If I was looking at, let's say frame 13, it's not gonna let you draw on it. It's gonna create pop up a little error. It's gonna be like, you're not on the right place. You cannot draw on this. So just a little note to remember a setting you're probably going to be using a lot in the same little menu that we've always been working in is enable onion skinning. So if you're not familiar with onion skinning, it means you get to see one or several frames before and after the frame you're on. They're just going to be slightly um, lower in opacity. So as you can see, I can see the frame before this and the frame after. We can also edit these onion skin values with onion skin settings. So you can show how light you want it to look, um, frame spacing, uh, how many frames before and after that you want to actually see. You can even change the blend mode. So a lot of great options there. I recommend you play around with it, see what works best for you. Um, it might differ for whatever animation you're trying to create. You usually do more frames before and after if you're doing like an arc because you want to see the full duration of the arc and make sure that arc is uniform all the way across. But if we're doing something like walk cycles, you might only have to do one or two frames before and after. So just a small note of settings that you can change to make your life a little easier during animation. So after you're all done animating, there's a few ways we can export into a few different types of file formats. Um, two popular ones are GIF or GIF, depending on how you pronounce it. And you go to File, Export, Save for Web. And in the Save for Web pop-up, you're gonna see GIF or GIF. <laughs> and you're going to have a few options. The two options you're probably going to have to keep very good track of is transparency and loop options. Transparency, if you're using transparency, can be turned on and off based off your needs. And then the looping playback options it can also be turned on and off depending on how your animation works. If it's a walk cycle, you're probably going to want to loop it forever. If it's just one person jumping in and out of the screen, you're probably only want to play it back once. Make sure to edit those if you need to before you save. Another way to save out your animation is as a video format. You can do export render video and you're going to have a few options in here depending on what you need. There is an alpha China option, but it only works for QuickTime formats. So if you need another format, you might have to convert it. Another way to render out or handle animation is sprite sheet building. Now we're not going to cover that in this video, but I'm going to have a great video right here on how to build out your own sprite sheet for games, for 
stream avatar for any engine that's going to take sprite sheet and we're going to be using this very file and i'm going to show you step by step on how to lay it out um, how to make sure the spacing is correct so you get no jittering or foot sliding or any of that and i hope to see you over there if that's something that interests you if not and this is all you came for i'm so glad you're here and i really hope this all helped if you need additional help for whatever reason or you have any further questions, feel free to email me, reach out, comment below. I am super responsive and I try to answer very quickly. I am also live on Twitch three days a week, so if you want a one-on-one -on -one live interaction, that's also an option for you. I will have all my links down below in the description, so feel free to check out everything that is ME Creations and I look forward to seeing you at the next video. Bye guys.